This video covers the calculation of hydraulic jumps, which are a rapidly varied flow profile condition. Hydraulic jumps occur when you transition from supercritical flow to subcritical flow. The depth upstream of a jump is always less than the depth downstream of a jump. In addition, the velocity upstream is always much greater than the velocity downstream. The following schematic provides a depiction of a hydraulic jump, where it goes from supercritical flow to subcritical flow. The velocity and the depth suggest that the energy at 1 is significantly larger than the energy at 2, which causes a change in energy. The momentum at points 1 and 2 are equal, and these problems of hydraulic jumps are always solved based on the momentum equation. And finally, y1 and y2 by definition are defined as conjugate depths on a momentum diagram. So on a momentum diagram, for the same exact momentum, there are two possible depths, y1 and y2, which defines the depths downstream and upstream of a hydraulic jump. In order to calculate hydraulic jump problems, you also want to be able to determine the length of a jump. Therefore, the fruit number needs to be determined at the upstream location of the jump, where your, where your flow is supercritical. When you determine what your supercritical fruit number is, the length of the jump can be determined as the length being equal to 220 times the hyperbolic tangent of the Froude number at point 1 minus the number 1 divided by 22. Evaluating the forces on a hydraulic jump. The following schematic shows friction slope or friction factor, FF, the normal force, N, the weight of water, W, the pressure force upstream and the pressure force downstream. The momentum equation states the sum of all external forces is equal to the change in momentum. In this case, we will be looking at the x direction only. The y direction can be neglected. The sum of forces in the x direction, the pressure force upstream, minus the pressure force downstream, minus the friction force, is equal to the density of water times the flow rate times the change in velocity from the upstream to the downstream. This part of the equation is referred to as momentum. It should be noted that the friction force is assumed to be zero or negligible because the length of a hydraulic jump is relatively short and the effects of friction would, can be assumed to be zero. If we substitute the pressure force as the specific weight of water times the area of the cross section times the centroid of the depth at which the friction force is applied, we can calculate the following, where the left side of the equation is, discusses the momentum, while the right side of the equation is regarding the forces associated with pressure. Now Q is equal to VA, so therefore we can continue to simplify the equation using the following data. And you can put everything in terms of the upstream velocity. Now this is really handy if we had a trapezoidal channel or a channel that is not rectangular. But in a rectangular channel, there is a shortcut. The following equation provides the shortcut for a rectangular channel. This is only valid if the channel has, a si has no side slopes and therefore is vertical. You can calculate the upstream or downstream depths rep respectively.